us know if he's not. So, okay, I think that's good. I'm gonna. I just started the recording. Just when you're ready to start. Great. Thanks, Miranda. So we do have five people. Okay. Okay. It, but if you wanted to wait another minute. Uh, I'm, let's see, what do we have going on here? We've got the uh, call to order, public comment, consent agenda. I mean, I'd be okay if people want to start, because I think the first people, more people will come by the time we get to the meat of it. And we have a quorum. Sure. Okay, call the meeting. Yeah, let's call to order. And Hope, could you do a roll call? I sure can. Chair Steve Caro. Here. Treasurer Ron Mitchell. Ron Mitchell. Here. Thank you. Vice Chair Brent Chergaskis. Here. Am I muted? Nope. nope. You sound great. Thank you. Cla uh, board members Claudia Schaffler. Here. Andrew DeWart. Here. And I don't know if Barb has joined. Barb Hard. Here. Great. Uh, Rhea Ortner. She must be running just late, and we will call for Karina later. That's yeah, it. Sorry, Two people I, I didn't hear that. Is Ron on the call already? Yes. Yes, I am. Oh, hi, Ron. Thank you. And then Jonathan Baumhover, is, has he been called? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, Board of Trustee Liaison Jonathan Baumhover. Okay, so three people are running a little late. I'm, okay. uh, I'm here. This is this is Raya. I'm calling in. Oh, Hi, great! Raya. Thanks, Raya. Okay, I'm gonna mute myself. Oh, did you see that Barb Hart's on now too? Yeah, yes. I got I got her. So it's just Karina and uh, Jonathan Baumhover. Okay, well, cool. great. We have a quorum. We'll begin. Um, the uh, first thing is if there's any non-agenda items for public comment. Okay, it seems like nobody has a non-agenda public comment. We will ask for public comment for each item as we go, or each group of items. Um, so let's see, the first thing we have is the consent agenda which is the approval of the 9-23-2020 meeting minutes and the September of 2020 warrants. Uh, does anybody have any discussion about these items? Okay. Um, then I would hope, could you, I forgot, oh no, we just say all in favor of um, approving the consent agenda. Say aye. 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 Anyone, aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, so we've passed the consent agenda. Um, now we're coming to our discussion items, and I'll ask for any uh, public comment on these items, which are the financial investment policy, small business support for the winter of 2021, and the Big Springs parking project. If there's anyone with discussion, uh, public comment on those items, we could hear that for three minutes each. Okay, um, so we'll dive right into it. Uh, first discussion item is the financial investment policy um, and Treasurer Ron Mitchell uh, will lead that discussion. So Ron, go for it. All right, thank you very much. Uh, at the end of the discussion, I would like to move to make it an action item. Uh, Dana Edwards is a financial consultant who is very interested in Netherlands, has lived in Netherlands, and is very knowledgeable about the things that we need to know about. 
and is willing to do an in-depth uh, study for us in terms of our investment policy. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dana. Thank you. <coughs> Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, as Ron said, I'm actually really happy to be here. I always wanted to be able to join the, the DDA, but I didn't live in the, in the, uh, the perimeter, <laughs> so I never could. So this is kind of a great way to be able to be a part of it. Um, so I really want to just leave as much time for any questions that you all might have and um, maybe just add a little bit more color to exactly what it, uh, the goal of, of an investment policy statement actually is. So let me do that first and then you can ask me some questions and just get some clarity so that you can make a decision about how you want to move forward. Um, the goal of the investment policy statement is in layman's terms, mostly to just get you all on the same page as the as the DDA and as the entity. How do all of you want to uh, invest your dollars? Um, Ron and I have talked a little bit and he shared with me a little bit of the background um, that you're looking to invest up to 250,000 um, into something better than a savings account at the bank. And so basically the this process is mostly to help you figure that out. Um, obviously with me being part of that conversation and guiding that conversation and gathering information into uh, a document, which Ultimately, you would probably want to have just an attorney review, make sure that it's all in line with Colorado statutes for your organization. But um, as far as what my role would be, it would really start out with a discovery. And that would really look like what are, um, what are your requirements? What's the risk tolerance that you all have for these funds? And again, thinking of yourselves as an entity. Uh, and then from there, really breaking that down into different components. You know, what's the time horizon? How soon would you need access to these funds? Or do you want them to really serve more as a really long-term type of investments or short-term type of investments? Um, we would touch on liquidity, taxes, things like that. So, so really kind of looking at it from all the different financial aspects, helping my role would be to help all of you make sure that you are in agreement of what, what you want to do and how you want that to look and to play out. Um, and then once that's in place, then you can actually start to invest <laughs> and start moving that money around. Um, so I want to pause there and allow you all to ask me any questions or any clarifications about the proposal itself or anything that I've just said. So this is Brent. I have a quick one. How much money do we have that's sitting in bank accounts, meaning just the bank making zero point, you know, or point zero something percent interest in round numbers that we that is, you know, in our in our banks that we're not using or investing? We have in the bank at this point, I got the statement a few days ago, about eight hundred thousand dollars, maybe plus or minus a hundred dollars. Okay. And is there is more money that could be available to us than that? Is that correct? But we, but it's not. It's in a different form. Or where? How does that work? Everything we have is in cash at this point right now in the bank. And it's eight hundred thousand in round numbers. And uh, Brent, a certain amount of that has already been appropriated through the resolutions that you have all passed. And there are many of those that are outstanding. So I do just want to make sure you understand that anything that's already been appropriated uh, would not be something you'd probably want to invest. You'd want to keep it handy because the, the goal, of course, is to get the money out there and invest it in the community to do the projects that you've had approved. The other part of your question, Brent, I think had to do with 
what you will be earning throughout this year. You'll still be earning more TIF revenue. Yeah. Um, and I think it was budgeted, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, Hope, but around $150,000 this year. Is that correct, Hope? For what? For just the TIF revenue, the TIF tax revenue. Uh, yes. No, I believe, I, you know what, I can't look at the screen right now. Why do I feel right. like it was 328,000? For some reason that number is in my head. But what I think what you're saying is absolutely correct. I mean, the money is yeah. for the DDA. And I think that's why Ron was looking at 250,000 because I believe we went before the BOT with a budget of 660,000. So I guess look at it that way. If we've budgeted money, although those monies are not necessarily into play, I feel like $259,000 is in play right now. Um, so the money that's not engaged in a resolution or, or in a project that's moving forward yet, is that considered money that could be used for an investment? I don't know, that's kind of touchy, but that's your decision. So, so just to clarify, we have we have a commitment of about six hundred thousand that we've already committed to to various projects. Well, we've budgeted, yes, and we've said like, okay, well, let's have that parking study for in the, as an example for twenty thousand. Okay, we'll budget can money just, for that. Can I just jump in? Sorry, they're called sure. encumbered funds. And Unencumbered funds. They're called encumbered funds. Yes. So they're used. So, well, they're encumbered once they go to the BOT and we get a loan from the water fund. Right. That's right. when it becomes truly encumbered. Otherwise, it's what, we, what we're thinking about doing right. or with the DDA. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's all. Yeah. yeah Thanks, Andrew. Have, the BOT has not improved $600,000 worth of stuff, right? We just have that on our shopping list. So Yes. Yeah. That's a good way of putting it. Okay. And, Thank you. And if I could try to clarify a little bit. This is Steve. Caro, um, I think from our budget um, discussion uh, last month, Hope and I spent a lot of time trying to figure out um, in 2021 what we would have, what funds we would have available to us, and we we took out of that the funds that we have already um, uh, promised to be paying out, such as like the 139,000 for Jefferson Street and. Yes. There's 70,000 potential match for the go, uh, for the safe walkways. So what we came up with just in ballpark figures is somewhere around 870,000 that is not already promised to anybody. And that includes money that we will be receiving in, that we project we will receive in 2021 from TIF funds. So just to clarify, it's, a, it's somewhere in the range of about 870,000 that we have not that that's not spoken for other than our budget, our shopping list, but we haven't promised to pay it out to someone else because we've we've subtracted those amounts when we came up with that 870. Yeah. Okay. And, and just to clarify, I'm sorry for getting sidetracked. I think more of today is really setting a, a policy that says we could be allowed to invest in a different uh, thing than other than a bank. That's really the goal of of what we're trying to get done today. Is that correct? Not, yes. not make any decisions on what we would do, but to set a policy, which we have never had about investing in a different way. Yes. And okay. it's, it's, it's allowable in the Colorado statute. And then in our first introduction uh, discussions about this with Ron, uh, Karen had suggested, or the town administrators suggested the creation of a policy. So like Dana reminded us, we'll all be on the same page and we'll all have an understanding about the pathway of that money and we won't feel blind if if the DDA chooses to do that. Okay. Yeah, and it also functions as a, as a you know, living document. So it can be updated, it can be changed, but it also can sort of be there to go from, you know, board, you know, trustees to trustees and, and things like that. Um, uh, I, I think also um, it, an investment policy statement is uh, creating one as a bit of a process. So, um, you know, that's why there would be, you know, after this meeting, 
um, you know, if you all decide, you know, yes, let's definitely move forward, then there would be another meeting either with all of you collectively, or I'm happy to schedule, you know, 30 minute with each of you. And just basically for me to like, you know, talk with each of you and say, what are the things that you're okay with? What are the things that you're not okay with? What kind of risk tolerance do you think is appropriate? What kind of liquidity needs do you know that this, these dollars would need? Um, and then to, you know, come back and say, okay, here's, here's a draft of what it is. And then you would, you would look through that and decide, okay, do we like that? Do we want something to be different? Is there, you know, disagreements, whatever the case may be. So it's a bit of a process, a little bit of an iterative process because it's, um, it's a really important document ultimately, um, whether, you know, I mean, you guys have, like you just said, a lot of money that you could do some really incredible things with. And so this is really adding a container to that and saying, you know, we want to be, we want it to be focused. And it could be a lot of different things. It could be a different type of portfolio. You could be, it could all be very conservative. It could all be very aggressive. Chances are we probably going to do a little bit of both. Um, but it allows for a lot of giving you, letting you know the parameters of, you know, where you can go in the, in the realm of investment and what you want that money to be earmarked for even. So, um, so I just wanted to make sure that you all understood that process a little bit better of how that would look. And that might have you be thinking of, you know, timeline and time frame and just, you know, to help you all make the decision <laughs> with, with some insight. Okay. Can I, can, this is Karen. Hi, Dana. It's nice to see you. Uh, can I just ask a question about the proposal? Because it says restricted view and I've been trying to access it and I can't access it for some reason. It's been so, denied. Uh, is, oh. is that an actual proposal for your services? Do you know? Yeah. Okay. So that's just basically a proposal to put you to work. For the two thousand dollars. Okay, got it. it Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't yeah. I didn't want to show it because of my mistake in the past of showing a proposal. Got so I, if I can freely open it, I'd be happy to, but I wanted to just keep it from the public. Oh sure. Okay. No, she yeah. well, she answered my question. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, that is not the investment policy statement. <laughs> just in case there was any um, confusion about that. That is just to hire me to begin that process of working with you to draft one. And uh, Dana, this is Steve Caro again. Um, I had a question for you is, have you done these type of policy um, what, um, proposals or, you know, a policy statement before for other yeah. organizations? And what's your history with doing that type of thing? I have. Um, primarily, they've been with nonprofits. Um, as far as organizations go, um, and usually it's a little bit of a, a meeting of bringing the you know investment expertise, gathering that information again, just getting everybody on the same page, and then also, and I know I've already mentioned this, but I, I always like to remind people you would you would want to have an attorney ultimately just review it and make sure that. <clears throat> it's compliant within any statutes that might be out there. Um, I noticed the financial analyst um, document that was on the agenda, I was just kind of scanning through that. And that had some links to some Colorado statutes, but uh, so just so you know that that's another area of professional review that you would want to have happen. But as far as my process, it's, um, I've worked with other nonprofits to help them both implement and understand their investment policy statements and to update them. Uh, this tends to be something that organizations create and then they kind of forget about it. Um, uh, ideally, that would not be the case. Ideally, you would, from this process, set up an investment committee, you know, two or three of you would review it every year. Maybe you would, you know, just if you wanted to make any updates, you would get in touch with me and say, hey, we want to change this, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and then I also generally go through this process with most of my clients. You know, the the criteria and the data we need to gather is very similar, but for an organization, there's 
a little bit more at stake because your these dollars will ultimately be used for you know the whole an entire community potentially so um, rather than just a couple individuals. Okay, thank you. And I just had another um, for the for the discussion for the sake of discussion with the group. Um, I, you know, I want to say, first of all, I really respect you and I know that you've been a part of our community for a long time and very active. And I think all of us really appreciate that and, you know, also value that type of a partner when we're, when we're looking to have some work done. Um, my thought was just to open it for a discussion with the group is I think the alternative to hiring you is or there's a few alternatives. One would be hiring some other person to do such a statement, um, but also there was a, a document circulating with us about other um, uh, DDAs in the state who have created uh, policy statements and trying to you know, work up our own policy statement based on what we've seen other DDAs doing. And I guess you know, posing a question to you perhaps is, you know, would you caution? What would you caution us about if we decided, rather than hiring a professional such as yourself or somebody else, to try to do it on our own? Um, I think it by hiring me, you would it would be a streamlined process that would be the same for all of you. My goal and intention would be to remove as much. Uh, emotion as uh, as often shows up in these kinds of things, and um, I think especially in you know Netherlands, you all are are clearly care about the town. So you know having a professional who, while I also care about the town, my number one goal is to really help you get a clarity around what do you want to do with these dollars? How do you want them to? to work and to function and how do you want them to be available and for what. And also I think just looking at it from the perspective of what if things change? Um, you know, what if something comes up in your organization and you want to access those dollars and you need to access those dollars? So looking at a lot of contingency measures, considering those things um, from a little bit of a risk management perspective and uh, and I also just think being a facilitator, you know, facilitating the conversation amongst all of you and also, you know, potentially individually to make it so that you all are really truly in agreement and that you know that it's also in line with best practices and investment standards and things like that. So. Okay. <clears throat> well, thank you. Um, and just the last thing I, for my part in the discussion, I the aim didn't really uh, give us a question before the board, but I assume the question is whether we would want to hire Dana Edwards. Um, I just wanted to point out that there are the alternatives that are worth considering, and you know, I encourage anybody in the board to uh, have a discussion here with all of us about you know why we might want to hire Dana versus or hiring anybody else, or also trying to do it on our own. So just to put that out there, because I, I didn't think that was really kind of laid out, you know, in our aim as far as what our options are and what, what our question is. So thank you, Dina. I appreciate your answers. Yeah, of course. So I, I would interject. This is Brent. I just want to kind of comment that I think I, I like the idea of trying to get some kind of a guideline for us to, you know, either we're, either some of us are really comfortable doing some investments and some of us may not be. And I like the idea of having a policy because it will guide us in future boards. We're not all going to be doing this forever as to what, you know, they <laughs> should or shouldn't be doing. Correct. And so I like the idea of getting a policy in place. And I'm kind of curious about the kind of doing a straw poll as we go through all of us board members and see, is that something you guys think we should do? And, or you are, are you comfortable investing in something outside of downtown Netherlands, you know, which is which is really where our money is supposed to be invested, if you will. And are we are, are people generally comfortable doing something, uh, and maybe what level of risk you'd be willing to take before you know commenting on that? You know, is it should we be in high value, high risk, low low 
return low risk, you know, somewhere in the middle. So I'm kind of curious as everybody speaks to maybe you could kind of, we can just from a straw poll standpoint, answer maybe those three questions. What's your level of risk? Um, if you want to get a, a policy in place or not. Um, and if you, you want to vote on that, you know, tonight, because that's the goal, obviously, is to get a policy, which I like, you know, so, and if you're comfortable investing outside of the town of Netherland, which is kind of our mission, if you will, um, until we, we get projects approved or uh, through the process. So I, I'm kind of, as everybody answers it, those are just at least my kind of thoughts. Um, so I'd be curious what, what the rest of the board sees about it. I, I'm, I will speak to clarify my view is I'd like to have an investment policy because I think it, it sets the tone for the future and for other boards. So I like the concept of that. I'm probably a pretty low risk person. I mean, I don't mind investing out of the outside of the community, but I'd probably prefer that we have things lined up and we could invest inside our district first and foremost. But I think if there's money sitting on the sideline that's doing nothing, I'm open to investing outside the community, but it should be pretty conservative in my opinion for what that's worth. And, uh, Thank you. Okay, excuse me. Can I can I quickly interject that the college the Colorado statute is pretty clear that investments need to be low risk, and I also believe that there needs to be high liquidity in the in access to the funding. Um, that second one, I I'm not totally sure about, but the first one about it being a low risk, I'm definitely sure about that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Andrew here. Can I all right, yes, go ahead, Andrew. Okay, so, um, well, in regards to um, retaining Dana versus anyone else, uh, I would support retaining Dana. That's just step one. Step two, in regards to, um, you know, risk tolerance well obviously we have to be low risk and high liquidity to deal with everything that we have going on so uh rent in terms of what you referred to as what we would call the investment policy which dana would present to us uh, then we could review our risk tolerance and it would have to be low risk and high liquidity and um, you know there's Dana can speak more to that than I can because I am not a uh, financial advisor so um straw poll uh for me says yes to uh dana and says yes to reviewing and establishing a policy that the town going forward is all on board with and you know obviously things change day by day However, that's not my wheelhouse. That's Dana's. So, uh, you know, that's my two cents. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, I'd, I'd like to just go quickly around the room to help facilitate. And I would, um, yeah, so if I could just call on people. Claudia, are you okay to go next and give us your input? I, I like the idea of responding to, um, you know, Brent's questions at least at first. Uh, which is sure, no, I think that makes yeah. perfect sense. I also I just um, wanted to chime in. This is Dana. Sorry to interrupt, but if if at this point um, I'm happy to stay on the call, no problem whatsoever. I also don't want to be influencing anybody's willingness to be honest because they know that I'm listening in. <laughs> so um, uh, if you all are okay with me staying on, I'm happy to. But if you think for your own, you know 
process you would rather me drop off and you can all talk about this um, amongst yourselves and just email me with your final decision tomorrow, that works for me as well. I just wanted to, to put that out there. Thank you, Dana. I, I appreciate that. I may be speaking for the whole board, at least for myself, I feel comfortable saying whatever I'd like to with you being on the call. And okay. I think you might be able to help us with some clarity. Um, and I think we all you know, know you in some capacity and respect that you're a part of the town and you know, very, very interested in the well-being of the town. So I think that anything anyone says shouldn't be personal. It's more about our, our thoughts as a board. Okay. But, um, yeah. So I, I think it would be helpful for you to be on just in case there's clarifications and things. Sure. I That's agree. Cool. Great. Thank you, though, for that offer. Um, so uh, back to you, Claudia, if you could give us your input. Okay, thank you. No, I'm happy to have Dana on the call. That doesn't bother me at all. Um, as far as an investment policy, I think we should have one. I think this is a great idea. I um, I certainly am comfortable with low risk. I think that's kind of uh, incumbent upon us. Um, what I wasn't sure about was when Brent was talking about investing in our community. I'm not quite sure what that means, um, but I do think if we want to invest in our community that we would want to invest with um, someone that can assist us as part of the community. That's that's how I kind of saw it, but I wasn't sure what uh, what else was meant by that. So maybe if Brent could take just a second and answer that for me. Sure. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I would I would answer it in this context, Claudia. You know, our mission in life is to invest money in the in the business district to improve the dis business district so businesses do better and pay more in taxes and we get more income, as I understand our charge. So I wasn't talking about investing in expecting a, like going to an investment counselor or, or something like that. I was talking about it projects, you know, that make the town look better and get more people to come there or stop there or spend money there. That's oh, I, I mean. see. Okay, okay, well, that makes sense. That's kind of what I thought. But as far as other investing, what would that look like? I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what we're talking about here. We're talking about low low risk. Are we talking about investing in stocks? Or are we? Well, I think that's the question. You know, when you set an investment policy, you could say, I mean, we, you could open up Pandora's, you could buy real estate, you could invest in stocks, you could be buying bonds, you could, um, you know, you can buy just, can all I, kinds of things. Brent, can I just jump in okay. here to, to answer kind of the downtown Netherlands investment thing and the, within the community? Uh, so, well, hold on just one second. Let me just before right. you think, before sorry. you jump in, just let me ask uh, Dana a quick question. So that then I that'll help. Then I'm done. If that's okay, okay with you? Yeah, totally. Um, so Dana, when we talk about investing in the community that could be literally in the community that could be any number of things we could buy real estate we could finance projects for people with a payback expectation is that something that you are familiar with and would be willing to work with us on um that piece as far as you know kind of issuing sort of like loans to to local um businesses or, or things like that that's not really my area. Um, mostly it would be making sure that the cash that you have on hand, that you're not sure what you want to do with, isn't just kind of sitting there eroding over time. Um, okay. And, and that you are able to invest it in such a way where, where it can be uh, low risk, as it sounds like m m so far, those of you who have spoken are more inclined towards um, where it can be low risk, but it's at least uh, definitely beating the bank and ideally beating inflation. Um, but okay. that's it's also uh, so that's you know looking at um, you know at least three percent uh, returns, and that would be something that you would put into your pol into this policy statement is. Our goal is to have a, a annual, you know, return of whatever it would be, you know, three to five percent or three to 
you know, 7% or whatever it is. Um, 11. Let's go for 11. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the greater return you want also comes with greater risk. So well, that's so here's an idea. <laughs> right? Okay, just uh, like Snyder's Garage, which <laughs> is a brownfield and needs help. And no one will take it on because the phase two EPA study is going to say the building needs to come down and the bottom 10 feet of topsoil need to go away. And then that would be real estate that doesn't go away, but is now then cleaned up. And uh, then, you know, that's just a thought. And I'll just leave Andrew, it at that. Yeah. yeah, thank thank you, Andrew. I think that's getting more into the details than what, what our point is right now. Um, but I, I would like to clarify for everybody about the the discussion we're having now about investment. Um, and I think as Dana pointed out, uh, our idea, and I think the whole board's idea is that we would, this would be an investment policy for cash that we have that's really not going to be used in the short term. And, you know, it would cover such things as liquidity. So if we needed to use it in a short term, we'd have access to it. But this is all about the, the idea of investing in Netherland or not is our programs are all about increasing property values in town, and that's what our projects are meant to do. But as Dana mentioned, while we're sitting with, you know, maybe a couple hundred thousand that most certain or most likely wouldn't be put into play on a project in the coming year, th this policy would cover, like, how do we invest that money? What is our guideline around investing that? Um, so just to try to clarify that whole point. Right. Sorry, Steve. I was just trying to speak back to investing in the community, which Brent had spoken to. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I understood. That's why I let you go on for a bit there, but but we didn't need to get into all the details of it, I felt. Um, thank you about that. Uh, let's see. Rhea, do you have any input on uh, Brent's questions of, you know, whether we're in favor of having a policy or not and um, the idea of uh, level of risk and all that? I um I'm um I I am in favor of an investment policy, and I guess if we think about three percent on two hundred thousand dollars, I think that in a year is six thousand dollars, which would easily pay would, uh, the fee to create the investment policy, which I think is two thousand dollars. Is that right? That that's correct, Rhea. So I think I think it's a good idea. Um, you know, I have no idea what other BDA districts do. It would be interesting to know. Um, but in general, I'm in favor of having a professional guide the uh, the public's money. I certainly don't want to have any hand in making those decisions um, without the help of a professional. So okay. that's, that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you. Um, Barb, do you have some input for us on these topics? I, I agree completely um, with what Rhea just said, and um, I think it's a very positive direction. I don't have any further input. Great, thank you. And Karina, uh, were you here for enough of this to chime in with some thoughts? Sorry, I thought I saw Karina on the call. Sorry. Sorry, I was I was on mute. Um, okay. So I just came in right at the very end of um, uh, what Brent had w was talking about. So I didn't really hear any any of the comments. Um, and, and in terms of having a financial analyst to guide the DDA with um, you know opportunities or, or or knowledge on what we should do and can do with the these monies uh i i support it i think that um I, I don't know exactly how like how the real estate acquisition plays into this but i think it should be one that we talk about as a board because there certainly are opportunities to um like what andrew had mentioned like with the snyders or 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 whatever other properties are out there. I mean, I'm just wondering if that's part of the conversation or if this is strictly like separate of that. But 
because that is an investment. I mean, real estate is an investment. It's not a short-term investment. So, but I'm in support of, of having an, having Dana on board and, and helping out the DDA with, with this piece. Thank you uh, for your input. Um, Jonathan Baumhofer, do you have some input for us? Yeah, um, I would be very much in favor of an investment policy. I think it would be a well-rounded way for this DDA to really look at using their funds and how we want to use our funds into the future. And as well as Brent said, we're not all going to be doing this forever. It would provide some continuity of government, which is something this town seems to somewhat lack. And it's honestly just because we don't have policies like this for the DDA and for some of our boards. So definitely in favor of that. Um, I think hiring the outside help would definitely be helpful. None of us are necessarily uh, skilled in this or have this expertise. As well as that, I found that uh, being volunteers and expected to try to create policies and rules and master plans for the, the town is you're generally a bad idea. So if we have funds, we should always hire outside expertise to do that for us. And then uh, in regards to level of risk, I would uh, be interested to see the exact language of the law for it. Hope says it must be low risk. That's fine. Me personally, I think the risk should always be kind of contextual to uh, the circumstances. Right now, we're obviously have a very um, difficult situation in the economy where nobody really knows what's going to happen. But I believe that there should be room in the investment policy that if we were to have a booming economy and the DDA uh, had excess funds that they could get into a little bit more moderate risk so that they could potentially make some funds to go at some of the deferred maintenance of the infrastructure in town. Uh, the town of Netherland will always have a long backlog of deferred maintenance and I don't think there's ever going to be enough tax money to come through that and I think investing in the community's infrastructure is a great way to invest in the community's future as it will benefit both the businesses and the residents alike. So that's about it. Great. Thank you, Jonathan. And Ron Mitchell, um, what are your thoughts? Uh, I would like to move that we appropriate uh, for immediate payment uh, $2,000 to hire Dana Edwards to begin this process and get it uh, accomplished as quickly as possible. Uh, do you have any other input? Because right now it's a discussion item. I see. Well, I did say at the beginning, I would like to move it to an action item. Uh, I've listened to everybody very carefully and I'm also in favor of the plan. This is why we uh, circulated the idea to start with. I'm for low risk. I'm for liquidity. I, I'm for a policy. I think probably it should be incorporated into the bylaws so that uh, it really has a permanent uh, function within the organization. The, uh, uh, there are many things in terms of, well, I would like to clarify, I think we're investing money in a short term uh, investment, which is not like investing in some other community. I'm all for and I want to see our money spent in the community for the benefit of the community. And, uh, but the fact of the matter is we do have idle funds and they are depreciating and we could at least invest to the point where inflation doesn't erode those funds and possibly have a little over as far as the Snyder's garage thing that's not in the short-term plan whatever it's a long-term one I'm very much in favor of looking at it in some other context but not this one and uh, I think that we should proceed with establishing a policy I'm very much in favor of it thank you Thank you, Ron. And I'll just um, answer the the same questions that Brent had asked us to. Um, I think that we should look at the level of risk that, um, you know, if there is anything mandated by the statutes. And otherwise, I think that would be a great part of the whole um, uh, investment policy statement. So I don't I don't think that's something that we need to decide now. Um, 
I think that, as we said, that we all want to invest in Netherland, and this is for the idle funds. So I think that we can um, certainly do better than leaving it in the bank to just lose money against inflation. Um, and I also feel like hearing Dana's response about why it would be productive to hire someone like her rather than copying what other DDAs have done. Um, I think that's pretty persuasive because it is going to be a fairly big time consuming project. And uh, so with all that being said, I, I would make a motion to move this item to an action item uh, so that we could take a vote on whether we would like to have Dana Edwards um, engage, engage Dana Edwards to uh, prepare this policy statement for us. Uh, thank you. And Ron Mitchell, I think, seconded that. Um, so uh, this is we, Karen. Steve, can I ask you a quick question? Is the sure. 2000 going to come out of operating or out of TIF funds? Uh, that is a good question. I didn't hadn't thought of it until now. Because um, if it is a TIF fund, then you would be voting if you make it an action item to recommend it to the Board of Trustees and to bring forth a resolution. Just, okay. uh, just, just a reminder. Thanks, thanks for that, Karen. I, I hadn't sure, even sure. considered that point. Um, and I'm not sure, just thinking quickly on my feet, uh, whether it, it would need to be a TIF item or operations. I don't think uh, there's enough money in operations for this kind of a, a thing. I think it's exactly. in the line of a TIF investment that I think you want clarity from the Board of Trustees on what we're doing. Uh, and Brent, that's a good point too, that this is all about investing, primarily investing our TIF funds. So it, I feel like we could make it a, a, a TIF expenditure that will guide all of our you know, future investments of TIF funds. So I, I think that's good that we would be making a recommendation to the BOT to uh, get that $2,000 to hire Dana. Um, but in the meantime, can we move to make it an action item so then we can make another motion on the vote? Uh, yes, and I just wanna you know, uh, thank Jonathan for using contextually the that's a great word <laughs> yeah the investment <laughs> landscape changes but that thank you jonathan it's a, a good phrase um so i make a motion to uh change this discussion item into an action item and so the first was steve and the second was ron and i will call your names um board of trustee liaison jonathan baumhover yes Karina Lucier? Yes. Andrew Duart? Yes. Rhea Ortner? Yes. Barb Hart? Yes. Claudia Schoffler? Yes. Vice Chair Brent Tregaskis? Sure. Sure. Treasurer Ron Mitchell? Yes. yes. Chair Steve Caro? Yes. Great. Thank you. Sure. And so now so, it's the motion. Go ahead. Yeah. So sorry. now I think if, if, oh, sorry, Hope. If somebody could make a motion for the vote that, uh, that we would like to vote on. I'm not very good at those. Uh, I'll make a motion. Wait, wait. Can I say something first? Yes. Um, with TIF projects, generally, there's a little bit of a, uh, of a fee that goes to hope to help manage projects is that going to be included on top of the 2000 grand for this for the two grand for this as well oh good good that's a really good point and actually yeah. the the town fee for 50 dollars um if it's a if if it does come out of tiff and it's a water fund uh, so yeah i think that um, if we do five percent as we've done on a lot of other tiff projects that would be a hundred dollars that could help defray some of the costs that Hope will certainly be involved with coordinating things between Dana and the board. So I, I think that we should add the 5% and the $50 uh, that the town charges. Thanks. Thanks for bringing that up, Rhea. That's a good point. Yeah, good, good point. <laughs> so does somebody have a motion? Who's our motion maker? I will make a motion to direct uh, DDA um, 
employee Hope Jordan and Chair Steve Corot to produce an aim to be presented to the Netherland BOT and a resolution requesting approval of $2,150 to hire Dana Edwards to produce an investment policy for the Netherlands DBA for on use chip rods. I need to type that. <laughs> yeah, well, that was, so wait, we need to approve that we're going we're going to to do that. Wouldn't it just be approve hiring Dana Edwards for twenty one thousand? I no, mean twenty one hundred. No. What the DDA is actually voting on tonight, Hope, is a resol basically to approve the creation of an aim and a resolution to then be taken to the Netherlands BOT because this is now TIF funds. So the BOT has to approve this expenditure. So they're gonna need an aim and they're gonna need a resolution which approves the use of this TIF funds so that the BOT can vote yes. So my motion is to direct yourself working with the chair of our board, Steve Corot, to produce that aim and work with town staff, Miranda Fisher, our town clerk, to get that on the BOT agenda at one of our next meetings, then the BOT will approve it and we will hire Dana Edwards. Yeah, I have all that. I was just hoping it could be a little bit shorter. That's all. It's, I, I'm gonna have to go down. It was direct, uh, motion to direct Hope Jordan and Steve Perot to produce resolution and aim for BOT approval. Aye. Uh, so as long as it doesn't involve a TPS report. <laughs> Someone has to second it is what. Wait, wait, wait. But if we're voting on this, can we just come up with a dollar figure now? I mean, usually we come up, it doesn't Jonathan, have to be the exact language, but, but we need to know what the amount is that we're approving. Jonathan, Jonathan just said it. <laughs> But wait, and the amount is for two thousand dollars, so that's not something that necessarily no, no, no. two thousand one hundred and fifty. Oh, right, two, okay, all right. For, I just, I just don't see where it says that the DDA approves hiring Dana Edwards in that motion. I see it. It talks about the process of what we need to do. I totally agree with you. If it comes out of TIF, but I don't see where it says. The DDA approves hiring Dana Edwards to for twenty one. Then DDA recommends hiring Dana Edwards and is requesting approval. Why would we have to? Why would we recommend it? Because, because our board, have, the board, can act on hiring somebody. But we decided to use TIF funds that we need to get DDA or, or BOT approval because it's not coming out of the budget, so we can't just hire it right now. It was coming sure, out. Sure, I, to I totally get that. I I didn't get where we, they had totally chosen TIF funds, but what I'm saying is, in your statement, it doesn't say that the DDA approves hiring Dana Edwards to create a financial policy. Right. That that I, I that that statement's that. just not. Oh, 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 this is Karen. I I have a recommendation where you could say the um that what you're voting on is uh, uh, that the DDA would recommend to the Board of Trustees that they hire uh, an investor to help them come up with an investment policy, you know, something like that. So you are actually asking for, you know, spelling out what you're asking for, but then also include in the motion the amount of money that you're going to be requesting. Wait, I just, I'm, what I'm saying is I don't hear where it says the DDA approves hiring Dana Edwards. And I guess I've never heard the, the term of recommending to the BOT that they want to hire. I, I guess I'm not getting that. I'm sorry. Well, what, I just what you could do, Hope, what you could do is you guys could actually have two votes then. Your first yes. vote could be, do you guys recommend hiring her specifically to be your investment person? do that vote and then the second one could be recommending going to the BOT asking for the TIF funds to do so sure so why 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 can't the DDA approve hiring Dana Edwards why is it because a recommendation the TIF funds. 
because unless you've got it already approved through your budget, which was already approved by the BOT as part of the budget process last year, you don't right. have, you, if you're taking it out of the district, yeah. If you're taking so, it out of the district, yeah. I think on the on our, on the twenty one twenty on the twenty twenty one budget we did put it in as a line item, but I can't remember if it's an operation or if it's in the TIF funding. Well, the TIF fund is never approved line item in the budget. It's just a lump sum, and then you still have to come back to the board for every single one of those expenditures. So they're improve, approving the TIF funds in theory, like this is how much you're going to bring in. These are the, the things you're thinking about spending money on. But every time you want to spend TIF funds, right. you have to come to the board for a resolution. So unless you approved it in your operating budget, and that's why I asked Steve the question. If you did and you have it in your operating budget, then you don't need to go to the board. Right. Okay. Hope. I uh, know you're you're doing great. We're all doing the best we can. Um, yeah. Okay. So I would just recommend let's just do it like that. Like it doesn't have to be one vote. That because I think it's important that we have it on the record that we have voted that we want um, Dana Ed to hire Dana Edwards for this. But I think it's also important to um, vote for that. Um, the going to the BOT and creating the resolution to get that money in order to hire her. So if it's not in one, you know, in one um, motion, it could be, in, I mean, two votes instead of one. Great. Okay, so does anyone want to make a motion approving to hire Dana Edwards? Yeah, it's Brent. I'll make a motion to hire that the, that the DDA recommends that we hire Dana Edwards to do a um, investment policy for the DDA. I second that. I third. Okay, Brent, Steve. Okay, and I'll call the vote. Chair Steve Caro. Yes. Treasurer Ron Mitchell. Yes. Vice Chair Brent Tregaskis. Yes. Board members Claudia Schaffler. Yes. Barb Hart. Yes. Rhea Ortner. Yes. Andrew Dewart. It's it's Dewart, but anyways. Dewart. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Karina Lusher. Yes. And Board of Trustee Liaison Jonathan Baumhover. Absolutely. Great. Thanks. And now, could we make that second motion? I make a motion to approve, to go to the Board of Trustees and ask for $2,150 to be ta you, taken out of TIF funds for the creation of a investment policy for the Downtown Development District. second that okay hold on wrong for dd okay thank you just wanted to write that down and i will get the audio of this so this is great it's as fast as i can do it for short that's great okay well but you, you second that emotion <laughs> okay thank you yeah board members claudia Schaffler. yes barb hart yes Rhea Ortner? Yes. Andrew Dewart? Yes. Karina Lusher? Yes. Board of Trustee Liaison Jonathan Baumhover? Yes. Vice Chair Brent Tregaskis? Yes. Treasurer Ron Mitchell? Yes. And Chair Steve Caro? Yes. Great, thank you. And thank you for your patience. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, moving along here, um, we have Claudia Schaffler up next with um, the small business support for winter of 2021. So this is Dana. Can I just 
Um, oh, sorry. Chime in. That's okay. I think I think I, I can drop off, but I wanted to just get a sense. Um, should I, I? I can start sort of pulling some things together, but should I wait to just hear from you as far as making sure that everything got approved um, from the BOT? And I guess basically, what do you think is just a time frame or when you all will be ready to really start digging into it? Thanks, Dana. I think it would be good to get it finalized because um, I don't feel like this is an urgent item for us. Um, okay. and Jonathan or Karen or anyone at town may know when the when this might go before the BOT to get the approval we need. We have our next meeting is next Tuesday. And so it's too late for that one. And then we take a break because of the election. We come back on the 10th of November which is a pretty packed agenda. I will just tell you that now, um, but that would be, and then there's one after the 10th, um, the 24th, I believe. It would be the 17th. The 17th, oh, that's right, the 17th. They're only one week apart. Okay, so Dana, so I think we'll have Hope stay in touch with you about the timing of this okay. and when it's, when it's all approved. And that's thank you. Fine. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. Looking forward to this. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Have a great rest of your meeting, you guys. Thanks, Dana. Yeah, and appreciate it. Right. Bye. Okay, then back to Claudia it's on one the item business support. The agenda in an hour. We hear you. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to be quick. I just, this is more information, and I apologize for not having an aim. I should have done that. I am asking, I have pulled together, or I'm working with Hope to pull back together the uh, committee that we used before to uh, make recommendations on what we ultimately ended up being uh, distributing funds to businesses that qualified. So I'm pulling the committee back together. Um, I have not heard from Jonathan, and from what I have heard, Jonathan is overwhelmed. Jonathan Ahari, sorry, I don't mean to speak for you. But uh, Karina would very much like to be on this committee since only two of us can. Um, Jonathan, if it's okay with you, we will let her replace you on that. That would be lovely, and you are right on on point that, yeah, I'm slightly overwhelmed okay. right now. <laughs> um, I may reach out to you uh, for advice, but thanks for what you did before. So it'll be Karina and I, and so far, Hope and Karen and Miranda, as far as I know, that's the committee. What we want to do is just look at what options we have to provide support for the oncoming uh, winter for small businesses. And I personally have a couple of ideas I'm wanting to explore. I'll just throw those out. And then if anybody has any other ideas or has any input, uh, please let me or one of the committee members know. Um, I am looking into the cost of providing better ventilation for businesses that will require it primarily because we're having to shut our doors now. And uh, I'm personally concerned about the ventilation in my space. And so I'm kind of exploring that, wanted to know if there was some way we could support businesses with that. And then we've talked about supporting the businesses that need to operate outside, that being the restaurants and so on, and how we can help them, um, if at all. This is the beginning of discussion. I don't have any numbers to throw out yet or any ideas. Um, but I am willing to look at if we have to do it, explore it. In other words, if we have to do it in a commercial building like the shopping center, asking uh, Stephen for permission if we will uh, finance something that would benefit all of the businesses in the shopping center, would he agree to it? Things like that. Um, so I just wanted to give everybody a heads up so they could start thinking about it. Uh, well, all right. Um, Andrew here again. So, uh, speaking as a American Society of Healthcare Engineering healthcare constructor who deals with containment and uh, air cleanliness, we would refer to you know things like an ICRA infection control risk assessment. So that's one thing. But the other thing is uh, we just need to get HEPA scrubbers attached to fans and put them on the ceiling and, you know, divert the discharge 
elsewhere uh, so they don't, you know, wrinkle the clothes or whatever. Um, but so <laughs> currently, HEPA filters are uh, quite in high demand. Um, so uh, rather than go to Stephen, uh, well, we could go to him too. But simultaneously, we can connect a filter to a fan and scrub the air. And Right. Um, I know there's some really good options out there. I would love it if you'd put some suggestions down and send them over to me, Andrew, so we can review it in the committee. Okay. Uh, that would be great. That would be really, really helpful if you'd be willing to do that. Yeah. Ron also, and I don't know if we have – I don't know that we have time for Ron to speak to this. So Ron is working on a prototype for um, ventilation and cleansing, too, that um, sounds pretty exciting. So, yeah. um, again, this will all go to the committee, and then we'll bring it back to you guys. Um, definitely, Andrew, if you have some ideas, I would, I would love to hear them. Okay. Thanks. Sure. I'd like to speak to it. Andrew is the designer of an excellent machine that does this. I'm just the guy that's produce, pushing production. And we'd like to get a prototype somewhere and give it a try because I think it would be an incredible asset to businesses to be able to clean their own air in addition to the uh, filtering systems that are provided by the landlord. Yeah, I'm really excited Ron. about Ron's idea. So we will all we'll pursue all of that, and it may be that air filtration is what everybody needs, because even restaurants are going to be indoors some. So anyway, we will meet as a committee and get back with you. Yeah. Cool. Uh, great. And Claudia, I think while we'll, we'll have, uh, with this being a discussion item, that'd be nice to hear if anybody else on the board has any specific ideas of how we can help the businesses get through the winter. Absolutely. Those are just my ideas. If anybody else has them, I, I want to hear them. Or somebody on the committee. There's some ideas to toss around about certain points up. The committee should uh, consider the tent ideas, too. Yeah. Yeah. So what so, idea? I'm sorry. Well, Ron, can I just uh, jump in here for a second again? So first we scrub the air inside the establishments. And then outside where the propane heaters need to work underneath the tents, uh, you know, that would be the secondary idea to the primary one, which is capture all air and scrub it and do it in a way that doesn't hurt the dresses and then we do the propane heaters and the tents and that could might help okay the tents are obviously problematic because of wind etc cetera, etc cetera, heating them snow um so that's also going to require a pretty extensive amount of uh, research to see how we can help with that, if at all. Right. I don't know. Yeah, vestibule. You know, does it? It gets windy here. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> can I hop in here? I I yeah. love the idea of this discussion and where this is going. I think there's a lot of uh, potential for some offline discussions here. I would suggest reaching out to Kyle from Busey Views, uh, Brews, because he has had that tent outside, which I believe he purchased last year for Frozen Dead Guy Days, and then we canceled it. But they've managed to keep it up all year on their deck. It would be interesting to talk with him about his intended use for that, and that could get you some more information regarding the Absolutely. tents, the wind loads. And then I would second um, what Andrew is saying. I actually used to work for Andrew in the hospitals doing this type of control. We can find ways to produce these machines for our businesses that 
might not require us to go get these really high cost HEPA filters. So I would suggest we take this conversation offline, reach out to business owners who are potentially interested in getting help with this and uh, let this committee go to work again. Because last time I think it produced some pretty awesome things. Thank you, I would like to, Jonathan. And I would like to say something here that uh, this I think would be an opportunity for the DDA to make very low cost loans to merchants to buy these high efficiency air scrubber units uh, and uh, have a long term payback because I don't think it would be a good idea for the DDA to be buying those machines. I think the uh, maintenance and the uh, use uh, should be in the ownership of the uh, individual merchants. And, and if you could all keep in mind that I think I sent around a spreadsheet yesterday about what some funding could be spent on. And we have about $60,000 that we can be reimbursed for if it's used by December. So if the committee wants to get together and um, discuss some things, our next uh, board meeting actually falls on Veterans Day, as Karen reminded us, and we're going to have to have to look at another date, but that's getting really close to December 1st. So are there any kind of short term things um, that we could be doing or providing to area businesses with this $60,000 we can be reimbursed for? Yeah. Again, I yeah. have an opportunity to, to meet and as soon as possible and address that specifically. So I just don't want to take up a lot of time in this meeting because we weren't sure. we weren't allotted that much time. So the sooner we can get the committee together, the quicker we'll have an answer to that. Um, and if I could just jump in, this is Steve. Um, Hope, do you know that the, the funds need to be spent by, you're saying December 1st, in order to be reimbursed from that 60,000 that we have left from that grant? It didn't say December 1st. It said later in December, but I said December 1st, so I wouldn't be up to the wall on that day. So the hope was that, you know, give a little cushion. Let's get try to get everything um, that's reimbursable re spent. So that December 1st, I'm just putting together that final paperwork because I'm sure that Miranda and Karen can attest. You have to write down every check and you know, I'm going through all of those right now. So it's a little bit of a process reporting. Okay. That is okay. and, and Hope, could you just please reach out back out to the, the group that gave us the money and just clarify like when everything has to be submitted by so we have some real real data to go off of? Because I sure. think this is a great opportunity and something like if we can't get together ideas about, you know, actually um, purchasing or giving money out to purchase HEPA filters and that type of thing, I would think that it might be worthwhile to buy a whole ton of PPE that we know the town will need in the yeah. coming year and just buy it because we can get it reimbursed. But I'd hate to just do that, you know, as a reason not to lose the money when we could have had more time and, and maybe done something that's a little more uh, robust than that. But I feel like sure. as a you know, fallback, it would be a shame to lose money that's been granted to us just because we couldn't spend it in time. And we know that PPE is something that is not going away in the short term, so we could make it available to businesses. So that's just my input about the discussion. Could we also include these uh, high efficiency air scrubbers because we might be able to fabricate enough to get some into the businesses within a couple of weeks? Yeah, yeah we definitely can fabricate, <laughs> yeah. Okay, and I think that would be more, yeah, to work with the committee on that type of thing that, you know, may or may not be able to be purchased in time. Um, but I don't know if the board, anyone else on the board has other ideas for something that's relatively short term. I, I mean, quick, uh, quick turn. Hi, this is Karina. Can you guys hear yeah. me? Yes. So, so my, my audio is kind of funky. Um, I think that um, at the 60 grand and, and, and kind of coming up with a plan um, to, to do something with it before December and before that reimbursement option runs out uh, is key. I think that reaching out to the businesses to find out um, what it is that they most 
need, um, whether, I don't know what that is, but I think just getting out there and finding out what they need, what information they want, um, is is gonna is gonna be probably at the top of our list as a committee to tackle because I think doing this in a vacuum without reaching out to and all businesses in the in the district is um, we're not really doing our job. So that would we can can't start. Can I say something real quick? Can I say something real quick? Yes. Yes. This is Claudia. Sorry. So um, I agree totally with Karina. I think that needs to be part of it. But when I put, when this first occurred to me that we needed to do this, I wasn't trying to meet any deadlines. I didn't even know about the 50 or 60,000. So as much as I want to meet that deadline and definitely if we can utilize it before then, but I was thinking of something completely new. So if the board approves it. So, so my ideas aren't necessarily tied into that deadline. Hopefully they, we can uh, come up with some creative ways to do stuff after the deadline, if that's necessary. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, thank you, right. Claudia. Pretty sure we can figure it out before the deadline. Perfect. Okay. As long as we know what we're figuring out. <laughs> well, good, good point. So that's uh, what this is Steve. to me. Yeah. Hi, this is Steve. Um, Claudia, uh, I think would it be okay if we task the committee with putting together a survey that could go out to all the businesses asking, you know, how we Absolutely. could most help them. Um, and it could be both about these short term things and long term. And I don't think that we need to Perfect. just, you know, spell that out in the survey, but we would get the results and we could figure out what what could most help the town short term and long term. And that could help guide the committee. Absolutely. I think that's a great this idea. Is Hi, this is Karina again, and I think just also to stress that, you know, it's also about providing resources to the small, to the businesses that might not have a finger on the pulse of those resources. So I think that pulling together information for folks that feel like they're a little bit left out or, you know, some people have access to information where others don't. Um, I happen to have a ton of information on the restaurant side, but maybe I'm lacking in, in some other scope. So I think that it also needs to be an effort. I, I, I think that this is where the, you know, the committee would have this as, as part of our, part of our project is to really try and share and disseminate information coming from all the different resources that are out there for small businesses, especially in towns like Netherland. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, does anybody else have any input on this uh, discussion item? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, okay. We're, we're, we're on top of it. Okay. Great. So, yeah, I think that would be great to get that survey out as soon as possible. That could help guide us for some things that we know we could do before the deadline approaches. Thanks, Claudia, for bringing that to us. Sure. The next item here is with uh, Ron and Andrew for the parking, uh, parking on Big Springs. And I'll let you guys lead that one. All right. Well, um, you know, we pulled together three separate surveys, um, which we presented now, I believe. And we would like to move that we accept GVA as the civil engineer. There, we, as the DDA, will subcontract Flagstaff surveying and you know we just want to bury 460 feet of pipe it's like I, this shouldn't be this hard it's, you know I don't know what else to say Ron you know you got anything yes we want to get a resolution to cover the survey and the engineering uh, that's our objective for tonight, uh, to have the DDA uh, put a resolution forward to the board of trustees for the funds 
for the survey and the engineering then together uh we want that money and hope can you want to give the figures that we are looking for at this point for those two it's 17 8 plus 2900 okay so uh plus, you know plus hope's time yes and i think we ought to do the same as we did with the other for hope and make it five percent of what the to administer is hope would be the project manager and andrew i will be her assistance uh, the <laughs> so that's what we're looking for is that and dda resolution to go to the bot for what's the total andrew 17 to 8 plus 29 actually it's 2950 uh, I, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know much about project managing the springs. I thought that the yeah, two. Was, of, I think that was kind of a joke. Okay, thank you. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, you don't need to know much, Andrew, and I will help you. Uh, Twenty. I was under the impression you guys were managing the project, and I was more of just helping you. I just, you know, yeah, having that. Yeah. Uh, and one thing that I do want to put out there is uh, Chris Pelletier has also made it very clear that he'd be happy to join the project management team. Um, so, Robin and him. Andrew, just so you know that. We'd love Same to have him, but we don't want to pay him. We'll pay Hope. You know, no, well, no, that's, you, know, you don't have to pay him anything. We're, the town's paying him. Right. Okay. You know, you know who also will help oversee? Who? Keith Lamaster of Garney Construction, who deals nothing but with municipal water and sewer improvements all over the country. His office is in Steve's building on the third floor. He can look outside for free and just, you know, be like, yeah, uh, that, yes or no. So we'll just clear this up real, real, real quick. Uh, my understanding of this agenda item to come before the BOT, whenever it comes before the BOT, is this will be a consent item at this point. Um, the reality is, is you guys would have been approved had the BOT had the numbers. Everyone's in support of this project. It's um, needless to say, after the past two years of recall election, a lot of controversy, the BOT is newly elected and trying to make sure that there is transparency. So if they're trying to vote to approve the use of taxpayer dollars and they can't actually have a concrete number that they're approving in front of them the night they're at making the vote, they didn't make the vote. Everyone was going to vote yes. They just didn't know how much they were approving. So this was actually less of an issue of support of the project, wanting the project to go through and more of an issue of the technical ducks being in line. So if we're gonna make a vote tonight, we just need to make sure that all three quotes are there and the DDA has a firm choice of why we're picking who we're picking and that that individual is highlighted and the number is highlighted and there is like a one or two sentence reason for why that individual was chosen. And this will pass as a consent item. So okay. just want to make that clear. Yeah. All right. And now. and sorry, sorry, Jonathan, but at the BOT meeting, the surveys had not been presented to the NDDA. So this the the NDDA had had not get, had been given the option to approve one of those surveys. So that's why I sent it out to the board this past week for them to look at. So the 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 aim was actually complete because what the aim at the BOT meeting was for was just to approve the image and to request to put out a request for proposals for surveys. But Ron and um, Andrew have been working really hard on this and they've got ahead of themselves and got a lot of bids and brought that to the table, but that hadn't been viewed by the DDA at this point, at that point. Well, I, I believe I, I understand that, but I believe part of that was a result of the vote by this board one or two meetings ago to basically empower that committee, which at that time was made up of Ron Mitchell and Andrew Dewart, to make those choices without coming back to the board. Correct me if I'm no, wrong. No, no, they were given. They were offered seven thousand dollars 
to go out and find a surveyor. But then they came back to another meeting, the last meeting, and they said, oh, it's 10,000 with some contingencies. But as far as for, I'd never heard anything about any committee having the right to just carte blanche and, and make a decision for anyone. That hasn't right. been, that was the committee of a committee discussion that. Well, can, I, can, I, can I jump in here? So, mm -hmm. JVA has a disclaimer in their contract that talks about a geotechnical survey which would cost $6,000. So Ron and I spoke with Nathan Skalak of JVA. And we said, you know, barring uh, digging into a bank of clay, Nathan, do you, are you going to require a geotech to get involved? And he was like, well, probably not. So, the 2950 from Lee Stadel. Now, this is why, because not only is he the least expensive, he's also the Boulder County surveyor and the most experienced man I've ever met when it comes to surveying. And he will go back 200 years to find mining claims and pins. But that was a sidebar. So, why we have asked for 10,000 is because we don't know if JVA is going to say, oh, well, you need to hire a geotech. So, you know, the 2950 plus the 6,000 plus your time plus talking to JVA is where that number comes from. Uh, so, let's not get into the weeds here, guys. All, all I have to say is we're all in support of this project. The BOT is in support of this project. Everybody in town wants this to happen. We're no longer debating about why we need money or any of that. All I'm simply saying is whatever happened, happened, and it's totally okay. And it's still going to happen. We just need to use this as a learning experience that if there is an aim produced for the BOT and putting on a BOT agenda, the information of exactly what you are asking for, exact numbers, and reasoning of why you have recommended those numbers need to be included in that aim. Because we were able to talk and be there. And the only reason this wasn't already approved and moving forward is because Honestly, there was no ability to prove in the public record to anybody who wasn't a part of these meetings or the BOT meeting that this had actually been thought through and then that there had been expertise and time allocated to categorically look at these bids, the project, what needed to happen, and an adequate recommendation made based upon that information. We simply lacked the information as part of the aim and as part of the public record to approve it. So like I said, whatever happened, I don't really, I, it happens. We're all human. And I'm not trying to hold anybody like you screwed up. I'm just simply saying, let's use this as a, as a learning experience. And Te teachable moment, this up. teachable moment. And let's clean up how we produce our aims as a DDA and exactly what we're asking from the BOT, because right now we're totally in support of this project. We just need to be able to show the logic and all the work that went behind it. And I know that everyone has been working really hard and been a really crazy time. It's kind of like high school again. You need to be able to show your work. And that sucks, but it's a reality of the public process. So with that said, I will make a motion that we approve. I'd like, to, I'd like to inject something before you make your motion. And that is, if you look carefully at the JVA contract, which Andrew and I have studied quite thoroughly, it has this disclaimer, not only for the uh, geotech, but other things that are in the paragraph of the disclaimer is almost longer than the rest of the uh, proposal. So coming up with a figure where an engineering company's 
company gives us so many contingencies and so many outs and such an open-ended contract makes it extremely difficult for us to give a solid bid as to what it'll actually cost when the contractor we've agreed to hire has an open-ended almost cost plus contract. So I suggested a contingency figure and got whapped down by the BOT for having too much of one. But I still think we need a contingency in there. And then we need to stress that if it isn't used, it goes right back into the TIF funds. We don't put it anywhere else. Uh, but if we don't have that contingency uh, money available, then we have to go back to the, the BOT and say, well, we didn't figure it out right. And we, we're, we're between a rock and a hard spot. But you're really not, Ron, because that process is okay. We, you work in construction, Andrew works in construction, I work in construction. So let's say the contingency comes up. They're going to give you a heads up. We have a BOT meeting every two months. All it takes is for whoever's project managing to get a quick emergency thing in there for approval. When it comes to stuff like that, the town's going to make it pretty quick. It's most likely not even going to be an action item on the BOT. It's going to be a consent item. Because we've already consented to the project. And if that contingency comes up and we, we understand, we understand. we're just trying to save the town money. So that I, I totally know. get it. And yeah. I totally hear you guys, it. All right. Uh, I just got to cut in here. This is not appropriate at this point for our meeting. Uh, you know, that you guys can discuss that, the three of you offline. But, you know, that's some good information and everything. But we don't need that right here during our DDA meeting about uh, trying to move this forward. So I'd like to just try to clarify what is what is. Steve, the I completely here. disagree with you. You do need this right now because yeah. there have been three failed attempts to sell this project to the BOT. Three I understand that. Attempts. I understand when that, Jonathan. Has approved of it the whole time, and it has been that. because of a failure of adequate information to be provided, and for you guys to sell this project as if you really want it. So I'm exactly. going to disagree with you here. And I'm going to say that this is our opportunity to clean up how we present things as a board to the BOT. Because if this board cannot clean up how it presents things to the Netherlands BOT, you are losing face with the BOT. I am a All BOT right. member. My job as your liaison is to tell you these things. And yeah, I don't I understand that. I'm Jonathan, not... I understand that. I'm saying no. that. Right they now, are, this is a whole bunch. It's three people arguing over points that everyone else is sitting around listening to. And I no think one, that no, no one's arguing about anything. What Jonathan is saying is that we should have submitted the three surveys proposal, the three survey proposals on letterhead at the last meeting, as opposed to me running around my email and trying to pull it together at the last minute. So, uh, you know, I'm sorry that uh, wasn't perfect. And uh, so when we present things to the board, we'll have them on letterhead and they'll be more coherent than an email thread uh, or something. I hate to be an ass, Andrew, and you know me, but yes, that is essentially what I am saying. Doesn't need to be a letterhead, it just needs to be available. I, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. All right, so that's great, everybody. Um, what I'd like to do here, try to figure out what is being presented to our board today and some exact numbers so that our board can decide if we feel comfortable to move this to an action item and vote on it to send it back to the BOT. And with that, I would like to ask Ron and Andrew, you know, what is it that you're asking the DDA today to be this is just downgraded to a discussion item because I felt like it wasn't clear enough. But if you can make it clear for us, we can make a motion to change it to an action item with clarity, and vote on it so that we can go back to the BOT with a very clear I would, process. I would like to present the action item that we accept the lowest bid from the highest quality surveyor of 2950 plus JVA's quote of 17,800 plus a little bit of hope's time and you know as Ron mentioned it's very difficult with the open ended JVA contract so 
what's 17,800 plus 2950 plus $150? It's twenty thousand nine hundred. Make it, make it twenty one thousand. We would like twenty one thousand dollars to engage Lee Stadel of Flagstaff Surveying, along with JVA, simultaneously. To one is going to do the survey, the other is going to do the engineering, and you know if. Jonathan, as you said, if some s stuff happens and goes sideways, well, okay, you know. Okay. I concur with Andrew on this, with the uh, qualification that there may be uh, something come up that would be a contingency factor. Jonathan has assured us that it could be a consent item with the BOT. I'm okay with that. I wasn't aware that it could be that easy because it's been hard up to this point and I understand why. Okay, well, thank you for all that. So with with that being said, um, we would need to change this to an action item if we have this clarity and so the board could vote on, on this motion. Let me just is clarify. It, so that number is for hard cost alone. There's no contingency built into that is what you guys are saying. So you're now coming back to the BOT requesting 20,000, adding in the engineering. No, the engineer yes. JVA's proposal is 17.8. Lee Stadel's cost for the survey is 2,950 plus 150 bucks, you know, and then round, round, rounded it up to that number. And that is the number to do what we need to do. So well, could I suggest that we drop the 150 there? It's for nothing and it's less clear to the Board of Trustees. If we're giving them two numbers that are hard numbers and then we just throw in 150 to make it an even number. For administrative so fees, for hope. That's fine, as, as long as we have administrative fees on there. Basically, there just needs to be a hard reason attached to every number. Okay. So and it's not necessarily fees. for the BOT, it's for the public record. Right. Administrative fees, a survey, and JDA's design proposal. And again, uh, Jonathan, what do you want me to say about the contingencies in, in the JVA's uh, uh, open-ended? I would uh, put in a clause within the resolution you're requesting, essentially, because you're requesting a resolution for this approval. So put in a clause within that. Should an unknown contingency come up requesting uh, a commitment of the BOT to approve in the consent agenda up to, and then Andrew, just add in what you would put in a contingency for one of your projects. Uh, well, I, <laughs> that, that would be totally different than what JVA might throw a curveball at us. So I have no idea. So put in, BOT gave you some numbers. Um, they were unhappy with the over like 50%. Uh, so put in a 30% contingency. Sure. Okay. That, yeah. 30 I, to 50. That works. Like sure. just take whatever, whatever numbers sure. Julian and Eric were uncomfortable with, take those numbers and appease what they wanted. All right. Cool. A 30% contingency I think would be adequate. I'm, I'm happy with that. It, and I'd only just suggest that you use 5% for the administrative fee, like to be consistent with other projects. Right, right. Okay, so we're going to add 35%. To, we're going to add 35% to 20,750. No, we, no, I don't. I think break that's not what to, Jonathan said. No, we need to break it down. Just so yeah, just itemize, it, guys. Yeah, itemize it. Five percent is for administrative fees, and thirty percent is for contingency via JVA. Beautiful. Oh, okay, so with these type of details, are we ready to move this to an action item so we could vote on it as the board? I hope so. <laughs> Me too. Uh, I make a motion to move this to an action item so that the board could vote on the recommendation we'd like to make to the BOT. 
Second. Third. Okay. I think we can just say all in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay. So now it's an action item. Uh, would somebody like to make a motion with the numbers in it so that we could approve that or vote on it? Well, okay. <laughs> this sounds like a TPS report, but let's try it again. So I make a motion to approve or allocate $2,950 to the lowest bid, highest qualified surveyor, as well as $17,800 to JVA, as well as 5%. All right, let me, give you, let, let me give you the 35%, 30% no, plus. No, we, had, we had to break it down, Ron. Uh, yeah, $1,262.50. Oh, okay. Oh, then that number. Okay. How much was it? $7,262.50 contingency. Okay. All right. So there's that. And then, yeah. Do I still need to speak or are we okay? I'm, I'm computing the total cost here. Just one second. All right. Stand by. Total cost is $28,012.50, given those three things. And let me repeat what they are. $17,800, $2,950, 5 for hope, and 30% for uh, contingency. There's a total of $28,012.50. So the total we're asking for is twelve twenty eight thousand twelve dollars and fifty cents. So the question I would ask Jonathan before anybody makes that motion, should the contingency be included in this request or should it be separate? You know, honestly, I was of the opinion we should have just approved it, but I get because of the public input the BRT has gotten recently as well as consistently across the last year and a half we need to be transparent and we need to have a full book public record um for the ease of access just put it in this so the BOT knows everything they're approving and hopefully I'm not the guy that has to sit here and, and look at Dewart in the face when he tells me it needed to be a higher contingency and go, I know, I'm sorry, but I'm totally willing tonight to say put it in there and I hope we don't run into any problems because I think we all know what's under there. It's a big spring. It's called Big Springs for a reason. So could somebody make a motion for what we want to vote on now? I move the DDA approach the BOT for 28000 $12.50 for the following items. $17,800 for the JVA contract. $2,950 for the survey, the topographical survey by uh, Flagstaff Surveying, which is a total of $20,750. There is a 30% contingency and a 5% administrative fee totaling $7,262.50, bringing the total request to $28,012.50. I'll second that motion. Hope, oh, could you call the votes? Hope, are you there? Yep. Uh, Chair Steve Caro. Yes. Yes. Treasurer Ron Mitchell. Yes. Yes. Vice Chair Brent Chagaskis. Yes. Claudia Schaffler. 
Yes. Yes. Barb Hart. Yes. Yes. Rhea Ortner. Rhea Ortner. Okay, I didn't hear that. Andrew Dewart. Fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Karina Lusher. Yes. Yes. And Board of Trustees Jonathan Baumhover. Indubitably. <laughs> Yes, Ron Mitchell. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Ron. Um, next item is the wayfinding recommendation, and I'm leading this one. Uh, I hope you guys had a chance to look at the aim. Um, Claudia and I on the committee, the wayfinding committee, had met with both of the people who responded to the RFP. Um, that was Merge and Graphic House. And then we had um, we had follow ups with them, and uh, according to everything in my summary and all that, uh, we have uh, found that the the bids monetarily were within reason of each other. Um, the graphic house, by my calculations, would be about twenty percent, twenty three percent higher. But I feel like the wayfinding project is going to be a big project, and we really don't have a good handle yet on what what the true bids will be, because this was based off of a um, old um, uh, survey that had been done for the town and a, a plan. And we just came up with, you know, six of the secondary and eight of the tertiary signage, but we didn't have anything in there for pedestrian signage or any other options. So I feel like the monetary side of it could be considered close enough that it wasn't what swayed Claudia and me. Um, but we we thought with Graphic House um, being a one-stop shop and really being, you know, they probably make a lot of their money on the production of the signs, whereas Merge is 100% of their money comes from helping us design for wayfinding and discover what it is that we need for wayfinding. And Claudia and I felt that that was the help that that our town needs at this point. Um, and we felt that we, if we're getting construction ready documents at the end from Merge, we could take it from there and put them out to bid. Uh, Merge had said that they would help us with that process. But in any case, we could um, take all of our signage with construction ready documents that's already been engineered and put it out to bid. So our recommendation uh, based on that was to uh, move forward with merge, feeling that they would do a much better job with us on figuring out what it is that we need for town wayfinding. Um, so I think that 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 in a nutshell is um, what we've come up with. And I also feel like as we've gotten into this wayfinding uh, longer and longer and over time, the you know, ProSAB has mentioned that we, they'd really be interested in uh, having input on wayfinding. And, you know, most of their wayfinding, I think, would be pedestrian level, although there could be some signage for parks and things. Um, but I do feel like um, there's also businesses have mentioned that it would be very helpful if we could somehow get some wayfinding that would uh, direct people, especially tourists who don't know our businesses, direct us to the um, various uh, direct tourists to various businesses where they could spend money. And as a DDA, we feel like that's a really, a, you know, in our wheelhouse and in our mission. Um, so I feel like that we don't know what the budget for this will end up being, but the only way to find out is to move forward with one of, one of these firms. And um, as a result, our recommendation is to, um, have have us uh, move forward with merge. So I guess the question before the board is, um, does the board approve the recommendation of wayfinding committee to engage merge to help the Netherlands design wayfinding materials and uh, using multifaceted discovery process that engages stakeholders and public input in the process? 
And um, I'd love to hear anybody's input on this and questions for for uh, Claudia and me before we could put it to a vote. You're going to go down the list, Steve, or we just do this? Sure, that sounds, I think that will help us. Um, Jonathan, do you have any input first? I'm just... I'm totally for wayfinding. I'm I definitely, and I think Claudia has always always kind of kept the loop open with uh, ProSAB, but I definitely feel like it should go hand in hand with anything that's happening in ProSAB with the trails master plan and looping in all of the trails to directing toward our businesses. And I'm also kind of curious about, you know, how are we actually going to brand this? Because we did wayfinding like four years ago and you'll find the little ProSAB like, you know, uh, circles or uh, whatever they're technically called it's blanking my mind at this point um kind of in different <laughs> places thank you but uh yeah. they've always been so small that my experience being around during weekends is tourists don't actually find them folks that don't live in town don't find them and everybody who lives in town they, they know where nature zone is they know where our local businesses are and they shop around and they go to different restaurants and support various different restaurants and to kind of spread their money out. So if we're going to do this, we really need to kind of focus in on like, we got a lot of things in Ned that catch the eye line and the goal of wayfinding is essentially to have something that people can see and that directs them in a certain place. And I guess my question in all this is going to be like, how big are these signs going to be? And what type of standard standard are we going for here? Because we've done wayfinding three times in this town since I've been a teen and remember seeing things go up. And they've always ended up being these really tiny, small things that ended up getting put on telephone poles or on stop signs. And honestly, the locals don't even see that they're there and tourists can't follow them anywhere. So that that's kind of my only question. I'm fully in support of this. I just think if we're going to spend money on it, we, we need to get kind of big and flashy with it. Uh, thank you, Jonathan. That, yeah. Yeah. Claudia, go for it. Um, and then feel free to jump in. That's why we're hot. We want to hire this firm because that's what they do. They know how to do it. So that it catches people's attention and uh, they've got examples from small towns all over the country, but we've seen several in Colorado that looked really good. And that's another reason why we don't want to try to do this ourselves, because we don't know. But this company has a really good examples of what we could do. Um, and, and believe it or not, I've had at least two people come in in the last week or two from the area that said, how long have you been here? I didn't know you were here. Now, the part of that's got to be on me, but I also think that the sign that's out front, the Tebow sign for the shopping center, is useless. I mean, obviously, they're missing me somehow. So I, I wouldn't – and these are people from the area, not necessarily people that are in town all the time, but they're from the area. So, But, again, if we depend on somebody that knows what they're doing, I think we'll have good results. And I also agree that the trails, because I get to ask that a lot too, the trails should be well marked, and we should include that in our wayfinding. But Steve also has some other ideas that I want him to tell you about that uh, I think would be really helpful that are a little bit more than just signage. Uh, thank you, Claudia. And yeah, just to speak to what Claudia said as well, um, yeah, this this company is, you know, it's very regulated about what pedestrian signs should, you know, the size should be and how, you know, they're professionals as far as um, doing it professionally and, um, according to standards, you know, there's things for 25 mile an hour zones, what what size the sign needs to be, how many characters it can have and all that. And Jonathan, this we got the presentations to the board before you were on the board, so you missed out on that. But it was really, um, I think, pretty impressive, you know, just how good they are about creating a branding and also creating signs that work. So I, I would say that you don't need to worry about that aspect of it as far as, you know, being hodgepodge and not being readable and things. I think they would be very useful. Um, what Claudia was just mentioning about is also in my aim. 
and I had been approached by somebody who develops apps and he was wondering if Netherland, you know, might possibly want an app. And Claudia and I just a week before had been meeting and discussing about how helpful it would be for local businesses to have um, a map or signs or something that point to their businesses for tourists. And I feel like in this day and age, something digital would be um, pretty cool and would be a lot more effective and could be updated much more quickly than either a hard signage on the streets or even paper maps. And I put a link, I think, in the aim there to uh, one map uh, map building app company that we could update all the time, and it would tie into a you know one of our our business. We have you know a few different business databases going. We could uh, merge those into one one database, and then something like this app could read from that. And where people are around town, they could just have this app. Um, you can just take a picture of a QR code and download it. Um, but anyway, that's just one idea of a much more granular level wayfinding that I feel like is, would be really flexible and versatile over time um, and bring Netherland more into the 21st century. Um, but it would help to direct people to particular businesses and, you know, it could even, it's all GPS based. So it could guide people from wherever they are to walk to where they're going. Um, and that's more for tourists, obviously, who don't know the town. So anyway, that's just some of the ideas that we were thinking about that um, we'd love to explore with ProSAP and um, and this merge, you know, merge company if they're the ones we agree to do, do this project with. Steve, this is Karen. Can I ask you a quick question? Yes. Um, I think I've just lost track of it because it's been a while, like you said, since you presented this to the board. Yes. So, the work you would do with merge if it was to get approved tonight is that coming out of your operations or would that also be tiff and have to go back to the board yes that would definitely be a tiff project and it's one that we've budgeted for um for this year although we didn't use it and now it's in right. our next year's budget okay so that's what i thought it, it, then you're asking for the bigger chunk of money to hire them as as your consultant for wayfinding basically is yes, right? I think what I felt like right now was the committee, Claudia and I had researched it enough and we just came are coming back to the board to ask for a uh, vote whether we should move ahead with merge or graphic house. And I suppose the third alternative is nobody and go back to the drawing board. Oh, I see. And then once, once you get direction from this board, then you'll go to the BOT for the phone. Yes, I think that okay, um, got it. from got it. really... And Karen, that's a great point. I don't know how well laid out it was in my aim, but what I feel like now is before the board is just a question of whether we should go ahead with merge, um, mm -hmm. accept our recommendation to do that. And when we do, um, then we would be getting into, we would be sort of uh, renegotiating with them about the scope of the project. And that's where we would get more of the monetary side Got of it. things. And Got we'd come it. back to the board uh, with, with real money figures that we'd then go to the BOT with. That sounds great. I'm I'm really excited to see you guys revisiting this again. So thank you very much. Sure, <clears throat> thank you. And, and any other questions we're happy to uh, try to answer. Steve, I think you just answered all of my questions with that. And yeah, looking at that, um, I might actually have an old school map of Ned from uh -huh. 1990s from the Chamber of Commerce that you guys could use as a basis because exactly yeah a couple of new buildings and it's styled just like this uh, example of Montpelier and Vermont. Right. Um, my only other question would be is if you guys could um, narrow down in the language of the contract what local is. Um, some some companies like that will perceive local as Boulder County. And uh, we have enough vendors within the town of Netherland alone that I think it should be specific in that contract that local vendors mean within town of Netherland borders or peak to peak. But I don't think we want to be hiring anybody from down Boulder Canyon to put up these signs. So that's my last right. thing. Thank you all for uh, all your work on this. This is awesome. Sure, definitely. And please, if there's any other questions that could help people understand uh, the, the
the project or why we're recommending uh, that we go forward with merge. Appreciate it. So I would say, Stephen, go ahead and make a motion and let's vote. Okay. Um, so, yes, uh, I'll make a motion that the board uh, vote to approve the committee, Wayfinding Committee's recommendation. Hey, I, I, wait, hold, yeah. on, hold on a second, you guys. I just I yeah. thought we were going around the circle for input, and I'd like to give my I, input. <laughs> okay, sorry word. about that. We were. I mean, I, I know where you want to go, but my only input, I'll make it very brief, is I was on this committee about a year ago and reviewed both those pros, like totally agree with MERS. I especially appreciate in past projects that they incorporated local artisans in the signs, whether it's little finials or whatnot. So I think that's great. And I'd like to see somehow this committee and the public art committee coordinating on the design of the sign in the future. And that's it. So I'm in support. Thank you. Thanks. That, that's a great, great point there, Rhea. Um, so I would like to just run through the list then. Uh, Barb, Barbara Hart, do you have any questions or input on this? Yeah, I agree with Rhea. That sounds like a great idea, but I also want to say I am uh, in agreement with Claudia on the um, table sign that it just does nothing for us. And I think that signs on the roadway don't do a lot for us. I would much rather see us uh, investing in people finding us digitally on their handheld devices because that's the reality of the time that we're living in and um, would just much rather see us spending the money on that than a lot of signs that will eventually just go away again. Thank you. And and that is part of the whole process of merge is a very robust discovery process where we get stakeholders involved in the early stages to really define what it is that the town needs. So we love, Claudia and I both love that about merge is how much emphasis they put on the stakeholder input in the early stage. Um, let's see, uh, Karina, do you have any input? And you're muted if you're here. I am, sorry, are you there? Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Okay. Um, no, I, what I was saying is I'm really excited to see this uh, being put forth, and I, I, I think it's going to be great. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, Andrew Dewar, do you have any in or questions for us? And you might be muted. I don't know. Yes, Andrew's muted. Okay. Um, are we motioning to adjourn? No. Uh, oh. Yeah, no, we were working on the wayfinding for merge. Just wondering if you had any questions for us about um, either of the bidders for wayfinding or any input on that? No, I haven't had the bandwidth to examine that, so I don't have any input. Okay, no problem. Uh, Ron Mitchell, do you have any questions for us? Or input? I probably had less bandwidth than uh, Andrew, but I support what the committee's done entirely. Okay, thank you. And Claudia, do you have any more input? No, no, I'm really excited with the support we're getting. Thank you. Sure. Um, let's see. And then, uh, yeah, so I'd like to make a motion um, that the board vote to approve. Um, engaging merge for our wayfinding project second okay and i think even though there's no money mentioned in this matter it will be a monetary item um so i thought it would be worth taking a real vote sure um board members andrew dewart Andrew? He's muted. Okay, I'll, I'll go yeah, move uh, forward. Uh, oh. Yeah, second. Okay, okay. Uh, Rhea Ortner? Yes. Barb Hart? 
Yes. yes. Claudia Schaffler. Yes. Karina Lucher. Yes. Yes. Board of Trustee Liaison Jonathan Baumhover. Yes. yes. Vice Chair Brent Tregaskis. Yes. Chair Steve Caro. Yes. Treasurer Rod Mitchell. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate that. And this will be a nice ongoing project. Um, the next item we have is the um, a raise for our executive director. And I just noticed today when I went back to the aim, uh, to the agenda, I didn't see the aim inserted in there, although I had created it. So I apologize that that didn't get into the agenda packet. Um, but I'll I'll just read from it real quick. Um, as soon as I find it, there it is. Um, and while I'm making noise here, it just reminded me that if people could please mute themselves when they're not speaking, uh, that will help with the background noise. Uh, so the summary for this aim is that Hope or ED has been in this position for I think it's about 16 months and um, her starting wage uh, and Hope, sorry, I, I don't have this updated one that I had given to you. Um, but she hasn't had any raise in that amount of time. And I've, I've heard from several, most all the board members that were very happy with the progress she's made and the improvements in her job performance over this time. And there certainly have been a, a, a lot of steep learning curve with financials and um, potential use of TIF versus operational funds and working with the town um, we're getting better with that. You know, we still have a little work to do, but overall, the board seems very uh, pleased with Hope's performance and the improvements she's made over the time of her tenure here. And um, let me just read through this here. Uh, and since she hasn't received any raise, um, I I would like to propose a one dollar an hour raise for her, and I also, which is about 4% or so of her uh, current salary or uh, hourly wage. wage. And um, I wanted to, I had a review with her on September 11th of this year. And typically when someone's at the review time would be, you know, either annually that would happen. But since with COVID and so many other things happening, I didn't get around to doing the review until September 11th. And so I would propose that we give her a $1 an hour raise and make it retroactive to the pay period that started right after that September 11th meeting, because that was when I finally did get around to having a review with her and um, wanted to uh, just get any input from other people and um, happy to answer any questions or have a discussion before we would put this to a vote on the action item. We're going to go to the list. Yeah, let's just go quickly if we can. Uh, Jonathan, let's go first with you. Um, I would just like to see the result of that review. Um, similar to my earlier statements is I feel like I'm being asked to make a decision with um, no information. So being a board member, being asked to make a decision, um, I would like to see this review in its entirety. The questions asked um, and the process of the review, how it happened. My understanding of that review would be that this board would do it um, either in a special session in some type of an executive session or as part of a regular agenda item. So. I would say that I am completely uncomfortable being asked to give an individual a raise that I have not seen the result of the re review that um, would give them that raise. That said, I'm not against giving Hope a raise. I think she busts her butt and does an amazing job considering what she has to work with. Um, but I'm about information and being asked to make a decision with no information makes me extremely uncomfortable. So I would like to see this be either a special meeting for the DDA to actually review this in entirety and have a discussion, or in the very least, 
have the full review in front of me to be able to look at and understand why this raise is merited. That's about my only comments. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. That's a good point. May um, I comment on this? Uh, yes, Ron, you could go next. Uh, you probably don't know this, Jonathan, but being the treasurer and working very closely with Hope, Hope was totally responsible for getting us the reimbursement for the COVID funds and worked extra hours uh, getting information in that was needed. And I'll tell you what they were. We didn't have a tax ID number. She worked getting that in. We didn't have a DUNS number, which is a number assigned by the firm of Dun and Bradstreet. And if she hadn't have got that at the very last minute and worked hard to do it, uh, we wouldn't have got that 150,000, 57,000 somewhat uh, grant money. So I think that that alone merits the raise. And I don't mind saying it publicly to the everybody that's listening. Thank you, uh, Steve. Okay, thank you, Ron. Um, let's see, uh, Karina, could we hear your thoughts on this? Um, so I think I would just uh, second what Jonathan said. Not that I, I mean, I, you know, haven't been on the board for very long, but Hope's doing a fantastic job. Um, but I think a formal process having the information in front of us to look at and having a, a meeting for it would make sense. Uh, thank you for that. And I just wanted to respond to yours and Jonathan's point about the meeting. Um, I'm pretty sure that when I read in the bylaws, uh, it's the chair who's supposed to do reviews of the ED. So it's not supposed to be in a meeting or in an executive session or anything like that. But um, Okay, perfect. I then I, yeah, I so if that's the case, that. then I, I'm just, if that's, then I'm, you know, would defer to the um, executive to, you know, make that decision. Thank you. And I also wanted to clarify that that doesn't um, say anything about Jonathan's point of having, you know, a review and being able to review the review and all that. And I, I'm very much in favor of that point of, you know, presenting all the information that people should need in order to make decisions. So I think that was a, a bit of an oversight on my part. I just thought by presenting it, I could uh, give the background and all that. But I, I do you know, agree with Jonathan's point. Um, so next, Brent, could we hear from you? Sure. Uh, my perspective is similar to yours, Steve. I, I think being a past chair, normally the chairman would take the lead and do that, that review in this instance on a one-on-one -on -one basis hopefully with some input from the board prior to that. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if any of us had uh, reasons to say something positive or negative, it's kind of up to us to, to coach you and what you would like to say. I know in my case, you talked to me about that ahead of time and I knew you were doing a review. So I'm totally comfortable with allowing you to make that recommendation. I totally understand what Jonathan's perspective is, but in a small board like this, where we're all volunteering, it's. Uh, I think it's better to just have a review with, with essentially the chairman of of the DDA. So I think it's handled appropriately, and I'm fine with supporting a a uh, increase. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, Rhea, could I hear from you on this? Um, you know, I've worked with Hope since she's come on board, and we. The ED, and I'm totally in favor of the dollar an hour raise. I, I think she's very hardworking. I think it's a very difficult job, and um, you know, I think she's doing great. So, and I also respect um, the judgment of of you, Steve, and your position as well. So, I'm in agreement. Thank you. Okay, thanks, um, Barbara Hart. Could we hear your thoughts on it? Yeah, um, I have to say I I agree um, with Rhea and and Steve. Um, I work with Hope in quite a few different capacities, trying to figure out information and share information about the DDA. Um, she's always exceptionally responsive, gets me the information I need immediately, has handled things that are probably far beyond um, 
directors before her, and I think she does a great job. I have no problem uh, giving her the dollar an hour raise. In fact, I, I'm wondering if it's enough, but I follow your lead on it as you did the uh, review. Thanks. Okay, thank you. And let's see, uh, Andrew Dewart. Uh, you're muted if you're there. Uh, while we're waiting for Andrew, um, Claudia, do you have any input on that? Uh, Claudia, are you there? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I was Jonathan. I think it would be helpful if we just had a, even a summary of the review and even hopes um, input, you know, like what her goals are. I just think it's important for us to know how she feels she's doing, how, uh, you know, we all gave you input, but then we don't, I have no idea how that was addressed or not addressed or, um, I just think it'd be a good idea to have a summary of what, um, the review looked like, what hope thoughts were, uh, where she is in on it, were there areas of improvement, was that addressed, um, where she, I just think it's a good idea to have, for us to have a summary, um, before we make a decision. I'm with Jonathan on that one. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see, and then Andrew, are you here? You're muted if you are on the call. Um, I was muted, okay. Okay. Um, so regarding giving Hope a raise, Yes. Yes. Okay, and do you have any input or concerns about it or? No. Okay, all right. Um, well, I think that, um, I, I think I've asked everybody, I guess my feeling is with, with the um, Board of Trustees liaison and another member, you know, feeling like they would not feel comfortable um, it sounds like not feeling comfortable with the board moving forward. Uh, no, no. Hey, Steve, can I clarify my position here? I fully okay, think sure. it deserves the dollar an hour raise. Um, right. I think sometimes people fail to actually distinguish between hope deserves the raise. She's been working her butt off. Mm -hmm. My job as a BOT member is to have a 30,000 foot view. It is to call out when there are issues with having public record and having an easily followable process. So I remember you reaching out for feedback. I do not remember you specifically asking in that email and outlining, hey, as the chair member of this board, I am doing the review of our executive director. Please provide me with feedback in concerns to this. Your email was in regards to general feedback. So I had zero idea that you were taking this upon you, which I thank you for, and I believe was, as Brent said, the right process to do. I did not have the information available to me to know that your request for feedback was a result of the required two-year review for the only employee this board has, the executive director. So to clarify my position, I think hope should be given the race. I think that when you as the chair, the individual responsible for doing this, ask for feedback, it should be 100% clear to the board members as well as to the public what you are asking feedback for. So we had the opportunity for feedback, but now this is being brought to us and saying, hey, I did this review based upon your feedback that I did not specify was about the two-year or yearly review. So I'm for this. I want this board to clean up its procedures and its policy so that everybody on this board, as well as the BOT, as well as the public reviewing this public record, actually understands what this board is doing. Because I can tell you, as a BOT member, this board is losing faith of the citizens. And as the BOT members, we are the ones that, unfortunately, I would love for you guys to be able to just have the votes. 
and be able to choose what to do. But we have laws and we have a system. So what I've been trying to get across to this board tonight is I know you are all frustrated at me for hearing this, but it is the prerogative of this entire board to operate in a way that shows transparency and that creates goodwill with the citizens. It is the job of the BOT to work with this board in a way to invest in the community and build a betterment for both the citizens and the businesses. We need to stop, start to operate in a way in which everybody can follow the decision-making processes. And it's not just thrown on us in a BOT meeting that, hey, I've thought about all these things and I've made these decisions. That's great. But if I don't have the information in front of me to be able to follow your thought process, I've been a teacher before. And I've had to say this to a kid. If I can't follow how you got there, it might not answer. It doesn't matter if you have the right answer. And I was told this and it made me frustrated. I can't follow how you got there. So I don't know if the processes were right. So I 100% agree. Faith or hope does a far above and beyond for this board and this community. And she is an upstanding citizen. But we need to be able to show how we got there. So I'm in approval of this. I have a concern about how this board goes about providing its information and providing adequate data for people to be able to make informed decisions. But thanks for... So fully in approval of the raise, have no concerns with the raise, have concerns with the information provided and the direction. Uh, great, thank you. Sorry, I muted myself instead of unmuting myself. <laughs> um, uh, well, thank you, Jonathan. I, I appreciate that. And I, I am complete agreement that, you know, I think all boards and public entities should be very transparent and, you know, provide all the information in a clear way. Um, so that board members can make a decision. It sounds to me like the whole board is in favor of this raise, and I would I can only assume that they'd be in favor of me asking to make it retroactive to the time when we were able to have our review. Um, I would probably feel more comfortable just tabling this until next meeting uh, with the same effective date of the first pay period after 9-11 when our review took place. And that would give me time to um, get the review together and be able to present it uh, to the board before I ask anyone to vote on it. Although it sounds like everybody's in favor of it. So I think so, that as long as I can keep the same effective date for HOPE, I, I'd like to table this until the next meeting and present the uh, information about the review in more detail than just my narrative. Yeah, my only quick question with that, Stephen, is do the bylaws say that the the chairman is the one that does the review? Is that what you isn't that what you mentioned earlier? Yeah, the chairman. I, I, that's what I remember from reading the bylaws because I, I wasn't keen to do any reviews. I'm, it's not something I love to do, but um, I read in the bylaws that it's supposed to be the chairman doing it. So I took it upon myself. I mean, with that in mind, I guess. I mean, I don't really care. You can certainly postpone it and share the review with the rest of us if that makes everybody feel better. But from my perspective, I I have to trust you as the chairman to be able to do your job. If that's what the bylaws call for, without being very specific, I don't. I totally understand what Jonathan said, and I think we need to be transparent in all things. But to me, that isn't like a big public process. It's a internal one that I'm comfortable with making the decision right. tonight, but that's your call. You're the chair, and if you want to postpone it, that's your call. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you, Brent. I think that, I mean, that's how I took it to be, that I'm supposed to be doing the review, and I didn't think that the review itself needed to be made public, but um, Jonathan, you know, is pretty strong on that, even though he uh, supports it, as he's mentioned, um, supports the decision to give a raise. So. Um, yeah, I think I, I'd like to just 
go by Jonathan's uh, request and uh, postpone this for the next meeting. And I'll, I'll prepare a, more information about the review. I mean, I, I uh, whatever you want to do, Steve, is fine. But you know, maybe we need to consider. I don't know. Does it need to be in an executive session? And do we do are there members who feel awkward that hope is part of it? Is you know obviously here. I don't know. That's just another thought. I mean, I would fully support the raise. I have no problems of proving it. But um, these are just other considerations. Okay. I would say I'm not against the idea of an executive session, not that I think we need to have an executive session for any reason, but an executive session provides us the ability as a board to talk about these things where this review, Steve, doesn't need to go public. But mm -hmm. it provides us the ability of a, as a board to have a safe space to discuss this as, as a board. And I would agree, Steve, I'm fine with your recommendation. It's just in some way, shape, or form, I feel like there should be, I mean, I, my, I guess my big beef is when you sent out feedback, it wasn't specifically called out. This feedback is for me as I have taken it upon myself based upon the, based, you know, the mandate of the board to do a review. I just okay. thought that feedback was coming. I didn't understand that was part of the one or two year review. So okay. I, I'm indifferent of whether we really need to have a meeting. I'd be fine if you call this to vote tonight. I just, I think we really need to clarify as the board when we're being asked for information, being asked for information. And I'm fine and 100% Trust. And as I had said, I believe you are right in asking for this raise. You're not asking for a big raise. She probably deserves more for the hell she's gone through in this pandemic. And she's done amazing things. Hope, I hope you're hearing me. I'm just trying to clear up the lines of communication in this board. Because from what I have seen All right. in the past two months, Jonathan, it's not oh, open. Can I just, uh, you know, maybe make a suggestion? Yes, please. We uh, hope writes down her job description, and then you know, like we could look at what you know, monster, whatever those companies are that headhunt. And, you know what? Andrew, they pay. yeah. Steve already did the evaluation, and I have no beef with Steve's evaluation. I'm asking okay. in the future. We clean this up. So we're call trying, it through a vote you know, tonight. We're, we're trying. I, I understand. And you guys should realize the BOT tries too, and we screw up too. So I'm not trying to say screw you guys screwed up and you need to fix it instantly. I'm just saying let's take these as teachable moments and learning opportunities. Okay. Um, well, Jonathan, uh, hearing everyone that said, uh, I feel comfortable calling for a vote um, for a raise for hope tonight. And I do understand that in the future, you know, I'll try to provide as much information with all of my uh, aims that I can. And, uh, um, and just, yeah, so I think I'm good to ask for a vote on this. Um, I would agree. Please do. Okay, so I'd like to make a motion that the board vote to approve a one dollar an hour raise for Hope Jordan, effective with the first pay period after September 11th, which is the date that uh, I had a review with Hope. I second. Third. Okay, and then Hope, could you call for a vote on this? Yes, I can. Uh, thank you. Uh, Board of Trustee Liaison Jonathan Baumhover. Most definitely. Thank you. Uh, board members Karina Lusher. Definitely. Andrew Dewart. Yes. Rhea Ortner. Yes. Barb Hart. Absolutely. Claudia Schaffler. Yes. Vice Chair Brent Trigaskis. 
Yes. Yes. Treasurer Ron Mitchell. Yes. yes. Chair Steve Caro. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And I just want to say again, thanks to Hope for all that she's been doing and all the development she's uh, achieved this past 16 months with us. Um, the next items are informational items. I do not have a chair report for tonight. Uh, Ron Mitchell, do you have a treasurer's report? Yes, we have 800,000 plus about $100 in the bank. Uh, and Hope has done a very good job of putting all of our data on spreadsheets. It's not com quite complete yet. And uh, at the next meeting, I would like to uh, propose uh, a moving some of our funds to a certificate of deposit, which uh, has a line of credit attached to it, so that we have both a increased but low level um, risk uh account that produces more income the rate that we would get would be 0.75 uh, which is seven times more than we're getting right now and the line of credit would allow us immediate liquidity against the cd so i will uh, uh leave that as my report and uh, give you more information during the month on the proposal for the next uh, board meeting that's all i have thank you man Okay, thanks for that report. Um, and now we have the executive director report from Hope. And Hope, you're muted. Sorry about that. I was just letting you know that I'm really excited about getting all of the financial spreadsheets together. It's been really good um, working with town administrator Karen Garrity and town treasurer Rita Six and, and Steve and Ron um, figuring out the processes, what makes everything work right, and then making the spreadsheets totally transparent, and I totally agree with Jonathan, to all the board members. You have access to whatever your committee is working on, and it is pretty much up to date because I have to keep the warrants up to date for the meeting. I've had really good interactions with the assessors office and I've actually really enjoyed the process although I'm not a big numbers fan so I did place in here for you the operation uh, fund to date and TIF fund to date we've been working with Tanner he created some documents for us as well but I feel really actually great about our budget and uh, what's going on in different projects, at least from what I've gotten. So, you know, the biggest thing that I want to say, I know you can read my direct, my executive director's report, but I'm really excited to let you all know that I was accepted as a Boulder County Leadership Fellows Program member, and I'll be starting on October 20th. And I really feel like my involvement uh, in this year-long program is really going to benefit you at the DDA. I have already connected onto their Facebook page and I'm seeing lots of great information that's out there that I think will be important to all of us. So I'm excited to share what's going on. Um, please take the time. I know it's late, so I don't want to go on much longer, but please take the time and check out uh, my executive director report. I've had a couple questions about the uh, bookkeeper and pricing, and I really just want to keep you all abreast of this and, and transparent about what I'm what's being presented to me. Um, I'm so excited. Last night I started filling out the form for uh, reimbursement. The first uh, funding I'm going to go for is the uh, stopgap funding as well as the porta potties. And it's great to have all these invoices that I'm connecting into a spreadsheet so that you can look at them too. Uh, I also just really quickly felt was important was um, I onboarded with BidNet, great program. Everything that we put out in proposals will be tracked. We can look at what other communities we're doing and other projects and other pricing. And I'm really excited about that as well. So sorry, I wanted to rush, but that's it. Oh, and I got a scholarship to the leadership program. So I just need to pay 200 bucks. So I'm very excited. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Hope, and congratulations on that. I know that was a, 
a cool thing that you're going to be doing with the leadership program. Um, that next up, we have the town staff report. Uh, this is Karen. Because it's so much over your normal ending time, I'll just say it's in the packet. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to email me and or Miranda. And then I just have a suggestion for your committee reports. Just take them all by email, you know, tomorrow or something. If you're all at all interested in uh, closing tonight. So anyways, that's all I've got. Okay, uh, thank you, Karen. Um, and let's see, yeah, for the committee reports, in, unless anybody feels really strongly that they want to present something this evening, I think that would be nice to, uh, they could send out an email and nobody reply at all uh, with the updates from each of the committees. Seems like that is okay with people. Nobody's dying to give a committee report tonight. That's fine with me. Okay. Um, and is there any other business? Can, it, can I speak for a second? Yes. Who is that? This is Barbara Hart. Oh, hi, Barbara. Yes, please. Um, I just wanted to say, um, Jonathan, thank you for pointing out the the strengths that we need to work on. Um, with the DDA, obviously it's been really hard for us. Um, some of us have only been to a couple meetings in person and some of the new board members haven't been to any meetings in person. And obviously it's a challenge for us to kind of figure out exactly how we're doing this online. And it's the same with approaching the BOT. Um, it's a lot easier to stand up in front of people and talk about what you need to say than it is to stare at a computer screen and say what you need to say. Um, I also wanted to mention, because I was on the last BOT meeting, um, that the town is making awesome strides, and Karen didn't mention um, the report she gave, and I'm sure that everybody's going to read it, and some of us already have. Um, but I also want to say, um, just to, to have everyone on the DDA give themselves a pat on the back, because we are also part of the reason the town is doing as well as it is. And when I hear on the BOT meetings, things like the DDA isn't doing anything, it frustrates me because I see what we're doing and I see over $300,000 that we've contributed to the town and the welfare of the town. And I think that we're all figuring it out as we go and doing the very best that we can. And I think that um, somewhere, somewhere along the way that deserves a pat on the back. And I hope each one of the DDA members will give themselves one since we can't do it for each other. That's it. Thank you, Barbara. That's very nice to hear. And and, and I think and that Barbara, we're, yeah. If I could just respond, like I totally do hear that. And I guess my almost it's it's more of a request to y'all. We're the most powerful board in town. Um I've been on Pro Sab. My ex wife used to still chairs SAB. The the other boards in this town, they have no budget. They have no money. They have no ability to actually benefit this town besides their goodwill, their ideas, and their volunteer efforts. This town, this board has money. This board is tasked with the prerogative of handling taxpayers' dollars and reinvesting that into the infrastructure of this town. So I will say this board does good and we've all been under a lot of strife and everybody always deserves the benefit of the doubt and a pat on the back. That said is this board of any board in town is under the most uh, oversight by the public has come over under the most attack by the public. And so I have huge faith in this board and the current members of this board. I think we've all been trying to adjust to a pandemic that blindsided us all through life into a complete wreck. I'm just trying to besiege you all that these things matter, that having a public record that is 100% transparent and like this board, everything you guys present to the BOT should just be a slam dunk. 
there should be no arguing whatsoever because you're the only board in town that has money to better this town. As the BOT, if we want to better this town, we have to raise taxes on the citizens. You guys, as a board, all of us, myself included, because I am one of your board members, we really have the ability to better this town. And so I say this to myself, too. And you all can call me out and I will be glad to be held accountable. We just need to step it up because this board has more power than the BOT. I just want to let you guys know that. So you all have been doing an amazing job and I know I can be abrasive with my communication. So I apologize. And I would agree with you, Barb, that everyone does deserve a pat on the back. Great. Well, thank you, Jonathan, for that. Um, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. And some ice cream, you know, pat on the back and ice cream. Second. Yeah. What flavor <laughs> ice cream? What flavor I don't ice cream? I don't <laughs> chocolate. He's always about chocolate. Chocolate? Whatever. I, don't, I don't know. I don't I'm going to say vanilla. <laughs> I don't care. As long as it's meeting cold. adjourned. <laughs> adjourned. Second. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, you guys. Bye-bye. Good night.